Hi, my name's Lee Kirkpatrick and I'm an instant lead with the Sophos Rapid Response Team. And today I'm going to be introducing a series surrounding the Remote Desktop Protocol. So the Remote Desktop Protocol, or RDP for short, was developed by Microsoft as a way to allow users, administrators, whoever else to connect to remote computers over a network connection and provide them with a graphical user interface. Now the tools required for this come as standard on Microsoft Windows. So to initiate and set up an RDP connection, all of the tools they're required to do that are there by default. And because of these reasons, it's something that's used quite extensively throughout networks by users and administrators in order to access remote machines. Now, unfortunately, due to the widespread use of RDP, it's something that's also quite commonly abused by ransomware groups. And there's a number of reasons for this. It's because it blends in with typical user and administrative behavior. They're not having to bring in those additional tools that may be detected by antivirus or EDR. It provides them with that graphical user interface that may make it easier for them to browse files for exfiltration, to install and use various applications. Attackers also know that RDP is quite commonly misconfigured or misused throughout an environment. There's a graph here from Shodan that shows the exposure of the remote desktop protocol to the internet, for example. And as you can see throughout the years, there's been quite a large number of devices that do have RDP exposed to the internet, anywhere from three to four million roughly. Now, granted, some of those are going to be honeypots, some of those are going to be test machines, and some of those are probably even going to be attacker machines. But there's still a large number of devices that have RDP exposed, and there's still a lot of organizations that expose RDP as a means of remote access when they shouldn't. Now, unfortunately, quite commonly, when we're brought in to deal with an incident and we find the root cause was because of exposed RDP, the accounts within the organization have weak credentials associated with them. And quite commonly, what we see is attackers manage to actually obtain access by brute forcing the administrator account because it has a weak password, such as password one exclamation mark, for example. We also see that there's a lot of misuse of RDP within organizations. We see administrators incorrectly using highly privileged accounts for RDP, such as service accounts or domain admins, when they should be using the principle of least privilege and only accessing devices with RDP with low privileged accounts to perform that task and that task only. We also see administrators disabling security features of RDP, such as network level authentication, which we'll discuss a lot more in depth throughout this series. We also see lack of things like segregation. So why was James from HR able to RDP to a domain controller, for example? Now, please join us throughout the series where we'll discuss some tips and tricks on how you can use Sophos to better secure your environment and potentially identify suspicious or malicious RDP abuse. Thank you. Bye.